Happy New Year. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited that this year's here. In fact, I'm super excited every single day. If you know anything about me, you know that I live my life on full alert, full alarm, full joy, full optimism almost all of the time. And I say almost because I too have moments that feel awful and rough and I get really grumpy and irritated with the world, but I don't let those moments win. One thing I want you to take into 2024 or 2025, whenever you're watching this, because the internet is forever, I want you to remember that you could choose what your new year looks like. Whatever day you're watching this can be the start of your new year. Now, what do I mean by those choices? Well, a lot of people make resolutions. I don't make resolutions. I just make choices. Sometimes they stick and sometimes they don't. I didn't become a runner until 2012. Why did I start running? wasn't happy with what my body looked like and felt like. So I made a really specific choice to change. And now all these years later, you will know very well if I have not run because I'm very grumpy about it. I made a choice. I've stuck to it. And here we are. When I got into real estate 24 years ago, I didn't know how to make it in a commission only world. I didn't know how to do real estate. And I made a decision to learn I made a decision to power through on the days when I got screamed at and cussed out, and I have made a really successful business out of it. Of course, it's scary right now. Every group on the planet seems determined to dismantle real estate. I'm not okay with that. So I make a choice to be a part of the solution. You too can make a, a choice to be a part of that solution. So let me tell you what that looks like. If you're watching my channel, it's highly likely that you either started watching my cooking channels during the COVID and you just wound up listening to me talk about real estate, in which case, hey, what's up? You're interested? I don't know why, but I love you. And for the rest of y'all that are in real estate, you follow me because you are looking for somebody to talk sense about real estate. And for some reason, that became my job in life. And when you see that the world is ganging up on real estate, you have a choice to make. You can listen to the nasty negative voices or you can live out a different way in your real estate business right where you are. That's the coolest thing about real estate that nobody seems to acknowledge in the mainstream media or in any of the bureaucratic agencies. It's that we are a bunch of tiny micro entrepreneurs serving tiny segments of every place where we live all across this great country. And hey, international friends, you serve where you are too. That's why you're being attacked. You're being attacked because you're the smallest of small businesses. So this year, you're gonna to have to make a choice to let your friends and neighbors know that you are a small business and that you ask for their support. No different than any other business on the planet that says shop local, support local, all the hashtags should apply to us in real estate. In fact, if you know anything about what I've been saying for the last several years, nothing would make me happier than to see a hashtag trend that says support your local realtor started by consumers and kept alive by consumers who understand the value that we bring to what is for most people their largest financial transaction and also one of the most infrequent. I would love to see that happen. So it's not a resolution of sorts. It's just a dream and a wish. But if I want to see that dream come true, I have to do the work and allow people to support me. It's also why when I mentioned those faceless bureaucrats and those alphabet agencies that really seem determined to take down real estate, I have a choice to make. The choice I can make is deciding how I'm going to fight this battle. Do I fight it just at home with my clients or do I say, I have a certain set of skills and talents and I can take it to those agencies with very good logic and really thoughtful approaches and fix things myself with the help of friends, because I do believe there's lots of elected officials that would join me in fixing what's wrong on the bureaucratic level if they knew what was going on. But they haven't had a practicing realtor broker among them to point it out and protect and preserve what matters to most of us, which is where we live. So I'm gonna take that fight forward. That's my choice right now. And of course, I can't do it by myself, so I'm hoping to have some support. And whatever's going on in your life, you probably can't do it by yourself either. So when you're looking at those choices that you make, bring somebody else into your choices. Let that be what you choose to do this new year. That you choose to say, I'm not gonna be by myself anymore. We are in an increasingly divided world, whether it's on the political front where we dig our trenches, or it's just the fact that too many people spend their life with their face on a screen 
instead of face to face with somebody else, drinking a cup of coffee or working side by side with them at a mission project or just going for a walk and saying hello to the person passing in the other direction. So what you're gonna have to do is decide to be that support for somebody and let that support into your life. In fact, I had this conversation with a friend who was not wanting to say yes to help. He'd had some health issues and people were asking what they could do. And he said, nothing, nothing, we're fine, we're fine, help somebody else. I want you to remember this. Don't always say no when somebody wants to help you. I know that you're capable. I know that you're strong and smart and brave and I get it. But some people live their lives to be the support. Let them in. If you've had a rough go of it and somebody offers to help, say yes this year. Say thank you. I will take your help. That's wonderful. And then once you've gotten your rough patch solved, go pay it forward and do something kind for them or for somebody else. But remember that saying yes is often allowing somebody else to serve in the way that makes their choices brighter. One thing that can make everything better for all of us if we start realizing that our decisions and our choices are actually pretty interconnected and they don't have to mean you give up what you believe and that you give up any of your business acumen or that you give up your personal time, sometimes it just means your firmness gives somebody else strength because now they know who you are and where you stand. And if they disagree, I hope that you'll be kind enough to let them into your space so that they can disagree with you and that you will kindly and firmly defend yourself and disagree right back and then walk away from that conversation feeling strong and feeling fair. Would be a great thing in life, wouldn't it? So maybe that's the choice you make in 20 and 24 or beyond, again, whenever you watch this. Now, a friend of mine, I say a friend because if we were in the same room, we would be sitting together and having a conversation and I'd hug her neck. Don't know her, don't think I've met her, but she follows me here on the internet. So hello, anonymous internet friends. She sent me a message and it said, thank you for all the videos that you put out there and thank you for sharing your faith and thank you for sharing business ideas because it matters to a random low level agent like me. And I gotta tell y'all, my heart broke that she wrote those words because what that told me is that she thinks her purpose might be a little lower than it is. You're not random. Whoever you are, I can promise you this. You're not random. Nothing is random about you. You were created on time, on purpose, and you might not know what that time is and what that purpose is, but you should feel a little more confident knowing that God does because he created you. And he will let all things be apparent in their time. You're not random. Now, until you find out what your time and purpose are, you might have to keep doing the work and you just have to stay dialed in and that's okay too. And by the way, the other thing that she said, calling herself a low-level agent, maybe nobody is low-level. One of the coolest things about real estate is this. The people that I talk to are not the people that you talk to. And that's amazing because in real estate, it's all about the connection and the trust and the likability. And then hopefully you bring knowledge and competence and ethics to the table. So you're not low-level to the person who trusts you. So don't call yourself low-level. If I would wish anything for you in your new year, it's that you would look at yourself in the same way that God looks at you with that, oh, that's my baby. Because I really do believe each one of us is looked at with wonder and love. And if we look at ourselves that way, it's easier to put it back out there into our businesses and into our friendships and our personal lives. So please don't call yourself random and low level. Because if I met you in person, I'd hug your neck. Absolutely, I would. And it might be too much of a hug and make you awkward like it does for millennials and the young people. They say I'm awkward and I'm okay with that because my teenagers call me extra. So I guess extra and awkward are equivalent. I don't know. And I'm going to add one more thing here because I received another note from somebody. And if y'all really enjoy when I answer random notes, send me your random notes and I'll answer them. And I won't call your name out because I'm nice like that. And this person said, this has been my worst year in real estate since my rookie year after 15 years, which in turn has me really depressed. Okay, this, my friend, might just be your moment. Why do I say that? Because when we are tested, when things are rough, that's when we get to make the biggest choices in life. We get to figure out how to pull through the rough patches. Now, in our world today, in our society, we're told to give up. Some of y'all are told to medicate, and please, please, for the love of all that's holy, Quit turning into big pharma when you hit a rough stretch because they really want that. They make a lot of money on you. I want you to do something different. 
either pick up the holy book and find some confidence and some courage in those living words from hundreds of years ago that are still absolutely relevant right now, or go for a walk. You'd be so amazed at what happens when you take a few steps through that really low moment. And I get it, health issues can keep you from doing what you wanna do. Look, ask me sometime, there is a channel that I followed here on the YouTube when I had my broken foot, and that man got me through a time when I could not run or walk or do anything active, and whoo boy, you talk about depressed, it will take you right down a notch. He didn't know who I was, and he lifted me right up, and so I've shared his channel, and I'll share it with you too. When you have other health issues, or maybe it's your family that's having health issues, and you've got the burden of being a caretaker, honey, I feel that too, that's hard hard work, it's unappreciated, <gasps> but what a gift it is to be a caretaker. Do you realize that? Those people that you're taking care of, you are going to be in possession of some of the most beautiful memories later on of that time that you got to spend together. So ask more questions when you're in caretaker mode, especially if you have somebody who's got dementia and memory issues challenging them. Oftentimes, they have wonderful memories of the long ago. So ask some really curious questions, allow them to tell some stories. And sometimes you get into what my son affectionately calls the loop, where you hear the same story over and over and over. Well, enjoy the loop, ask some questions and start a new loop if you can. And start to find those tiny bright moments inside those really rough patches. Here's the crazy part. When you start focusing on a good word to bring you back and a walk to bring you back, and look at somebody else who has alternatives to bring you back, and then you look at your situation and find that bright moment of light. Real estate is the weirdest business in the world. That's one reason I love it. Your real estate business is gonna respond. And here's one of the interesting things about this internet video phenomenon world we're in. If you start talking to the world in general through your video camera about the challenges and joys and bright lights of being a caretaker, you're gonna find other people in that space. They're gonna respond and may even ask you a real estate question. Shazam, you may have a piece of business. And then you start talking about your journey and say, you know what, for this new year, I have decided that I'm not gonna find those 20 pounds again. I'm gonna get rid of them and I'm not losing them because then I might find them. They're just gonna be banished away forever. And then you talk about that journey and you'll find somebody else out there is on the same journey and would like to join you because they don't wanna be alone either. When you're pushing through a rough spot, sometimes that's where your mojo is. Your mojo may lie in the vulnerability and in what grows out of that vulnerability, which is connection. And that's just a couple of New Year's thoughts for y'all. I can tell you that I'm excited for 2024. It's going to be an amazing year. I'm very excited for what's upcoming in my personal journey, and I'm excited for all the people who are choosing to do it with me. And if you would like to support me in this journey of running for Congress, then just let me know. Leave a message below, put something in the comments, send me a private message, and come out and show up. Because if there's anything I wish for 2024 is that I'll get to see more of my online anonymous people in real life because we will show up for each other because I won't lose hope. I do believe that real estate's worth fighting for. I believe this country is worth fighting for. I believe my kid's future is worth fighting for. So if it may have to get done, it may as well be me. So I'm putting my name in the hat to go into the arena in the words of Teddy Roosevelt, and I don't wanna do it by myself. So if you'll join me, let me know. And in the meantime, this year can be your best ever. And I sure do hope it is.